another up close uh, video, this time looking at the brand new media dies uh, from Tonic Studios. So they originally, uh, for Ho Chanda's third birthday, I think it was, uh, brought out the first um, media die they'd ever done, which was the Jigsaw Creation die, um, which cuts you out a five piece by five piece jigsaw puzzle. Um, what does it, it measures five and a half inches square, so if you make six by six cards, it would look brilliant on that. Or you can do, um, you know, home decor projects and everything as well. Um, and they also brought out the metal shim to go with their media dies. Um, now I've only used the media dies in the tonic tangerine, but I know they do work in the Gemini. And um, if you want to use them in any other uh, brand of machine, you obviously got to try it out first. But you want to use the sandwich that you would use if you were going to emboss the detail of a die. You know when you, you cut it and you sort of flip out the mats and you put the tan mat on different mat, different uh, solid plate um, and then you emboss the die. It's that sandwich but you take out your tan mat or whatever coloured mat it is, the rubber mat, um, and you put in your metal shim. Um, and that is the sandwich that you use to cut these dies. Um, I mean it probably depends on different machines and how and how uh, much pressure they apply um, <clears throat> to whether you might need an extra shim or something to get it to have enough pressure but um, you have to use the metal shim with these dies because they've got such a deep blade on them um, to get a nice cut uh, through a thicker material that they will really embed themselves into your plastic cutting plates so you want to make sure the cutting edge is going into the metal plate. Now I've been using um, an A4 metal plate and you can see uh, where I've cut the puzzle die into the plate. So it will indent your plate but um, if you keep using it on both sides um, it should stay reasonably flat. Um, so just keep make, make sure like if it's bowing one way you just put it up the other way. Um, the next time you use it in your sandwich. Um, so it will indent into the plate, it's supposed to do that because otherwise you will wreck your cutting plate for your machine. So you just want to make sure you use the sandwich that you would use to emboss a die, take the embossing mat out and put this in and make sure the cutting edge is going into this and that's how you get it to cut. And for the tangerine, for the tangerine if you were going to um, emboss a die, you use your top plate and you use the one that says die embossing plate um, and you put it in the combination so you would have you'd have this plate, then you'd put your metal shim, then you'd put your piece of cardstock, then you'd put your die cutting side down and then you would put the green plate on top and that is how you would cut it through the tangerine. So I thought I'd better get that out of the, the way first. Um, so yeah, so the first one they brought out was this um, gorgeous jigsaw die. Um, I've done quite a few projects using this so I will put some of the photos at the end of the projects I've done with this and uh, most of those projects are on my Arty Potential channel, there's one on the Crafty Potential channel um, as well that was a, a love you wedding card. Um, yeah, so that's the jigsaw um, and cuts beautifully through thicker materials. So this is um, like grey board. This isn't that thick. This is, um, you can see there, it's some that comes on the back of um, one of those envelopes that has the, the card on the back to keep them flat. Um, so that, it cuts through that kind of grey board. Obviously it cuts through like funky foam, um, you know, board, normal dies cut through funky foam. Um, but it'll cut through um, it cuts through fabric nicely because I've done that for one of my projects. Um, it cuts through. It can cut through normal paper and cardstock. You can deboss the dies um, into the card. Um, you might want to spray it with a bit of water first just to make sure the card doesn't crack being um, pushed so deeply into uh, the pattern. Um, you can also cut things like um, tin cans and craft metal and um, leather, like faux leather, um, all sorts of different things, and acetate, shrink plastic, you know, lots of different uh, materials that you can cut. Basically, if I think if you, I think they said if you can cut it with 
um, a decent pair of scissors, it's probably going to cut with this. So uh, bear that in mind when, when you're thinking about what things you want to cut. Okay, so anyway. So the first one was the gorgeous Jigsaw Creation die set. Then they brought out um, the next set. This was part of their 17th birthday celebrations. They brought out um, these five sets. So you've got the Steam Cogs and Widgets, the traditional timepiece, Charlotte's Frame, Cassandra's Ven Ven Ventana, uh, Clementine's Glass, oh, and Clementine's Glass. Um, and so these are all, um, they're kind of like Verso dies, um, but the intricate one has its own outside cutting edge but not an inside cutting edge and then you get um, the corresponding shapes. So this one kind of looks to me like a gravestone, I'm going to do a, a project with that. Uh, this one looks like um, a sort of squat rectangle, this one's an oval and then you get the circle in the centre of the timepiece as well. I cannot wait to use this one, I've got a really good idea to do an acrylic pour on a vinyl record and have this in the centre of it so watch out for arty potential showing that idea. Um, I haven't actually had a chance to use any of these yet um, to create any projects with but if I have made any projects by the time I edit this video then I will put the photos at the end as well and I'll try and remember to come back and link to videos and stuff too. Um, but I'm going to open all of these for you so you can see um, exactly what's inside as well. But they also, um, towards the end of their 17th birthday um, event, I think they launched these with the terrarium and uh, chest uh, die sets as well. Or the hamper, they were calling it hamper. The terrarium and the hamper die sets. Um, so these are the gorgeous antique keys and locks. So... Um, I found out the easiest way to open these. They're such gorgeous packaging. I didn't want to rip into them and um, and ruin them. So I found the easiest way to get them open nicely is to use um, the tonic palette knife or um, like a butter knife would probably work as well. And then going in from one side, sort of try and get it, push it all the way through and then hold it against you and like pull towards you sort of using a kind of sawing motion to get through the adhesive and then you can literally um, prise it open, flick out that part and then pull the dies out and there we have it, so that gets them out really easily out of the packet so I'm going to do the rest of these and be back in a second okay so I've opened them all, I thought I would just give you a top tip <laughs> on how to get the sticky stuff off of your palette knife because now that's covered in sticky stuff um, you can get like label remover and stuff but I have this, where's it gone? where's it gone? oh it's there I've got this stuff, um, adhesive remover from sticks too so you just want to put some of that on your piece of kitchen actually you can put it straight on the knife just to, you want to let it soak for a little bit just to soak into all of the um, adhesive that's on there so I might just leave that and then I'll come back to that in a second and show you how to you just wipe it really, it's not very difficult but I'll show you Okay, so I've opened all the packets so this is your um, um, so this is your jigsaw die and um, it measures 140mm uh, which is 14cm or 5.5 inches and each um, jigsaw piece measures just under three centimetres, so a little bit over an inch um, each, just so you know. Um, yeah, so you can use this to create your own puzzle shapes. If you want to actually, so if you wanted it to be, um, say, a photograph puzzle, you'd have to use it this size, but if you wanted to do some kind of mixed media piece or maybe um, even do a puzzle that's a painting that you've done, you could cut this a few times, piece together a puzzle the size that you want because you can mix and match all these pieces and elongate it both ways, well any direction actually. Um, so you'd have to do that and then paint it. Um, that, that would be how you'd get a bigger puzzle out of it, otherwise um, you can't really do that any other way. But um, 
or you can just use the jigsaw pieces on a project. Like on my Arty Potential channel, I put up um, a video of how I decorated a notebook and then just black gessoed it all and sprayed it with the Nouveau Mica Mist to make it look like a galaxy notebook. So lots of different ways to use this die set. Then I'll show you the, the clock and the cogs first because these are my favourites. I cannot wait to cut this clock out. I mean, I could even do it. Do I have a piece of card? I don't think I've got a piece of thick stuff here. Uh, where would I have something? Okay, I will destroy this envelope just so I can cut the, <laughs> the, cog, the clock. So this is basically the kind of chipboard that you can cut, just off the back of an envelope. So, um, with the clock, you can cut this, um, well that's quite good, it shows you how it was on the card, it's really heavy actually, you can tell there's a lot of metal in there, if I hold it up you can probably see just how deep that um, cutting edge is on it. Um, have I got another die? Um, Okay, this is just a, a lawn thorn die I just happen to have sitting here. So that is the normal cutting edge of any normal die. And that is the, the thick edge of the mixed media dies, or the media dies. So you can see, I mean it's probably triple the height actually of a normal blade. So that's how it can cut through such um, thick materials. So... Um, yeah, so the clock, it comes with an outer cutting edge already on it, um, and so if you cut this, it would have a solid centre, but for what I want it for, um, it's good, you know, I want it to have a hollow centre, so I'm going to use the circle die that comes with it, and actually, this is going to be really good, um, say you like, you're into your, um, like, triple thick heat embossing and stuff, you can cut your, your grey board or your sturdier cardboard uh, just with a basic circle shape and then do a cool technique um, with your melted embossing powders on it too so or resin as well actually or acrylic pouring so you know there's loads and loads of options um, it's just great to have some nice basic shapes so I'm going to tape this down and then I'm going to use my new black handled scissors from Tonic gorgeous black handled ones um, I'm just going to trim the cardboard down um, yeah and then I'm going to cut this so let's see how they cut I mean I've cut the jigsaw die before but I've not cut any of the smaller dies before <clears throat> and I think because um, with the smaller dies, because they're sort of over a lesser area, I think they're actually more versatile than the puzzle dies. You can probably find there's some things that the puzzle maybe doesn't quite cut through, but the smaller dies probably will cut through it, especially if you're just using like the circle. So, we've got the tangerine. And then the cutting sandwich we want is the white plate. The metal shim, uh, you, the tonic one is A5, but I'm still using the A4 one. Um, and then you want your substrate and then your die with cutting edge down, and then you want your green plate on top. And you just want to run that through. Then perfect look at that once through and it's cut absolutely perfectly so let's pull this away and then here we go let's take it out now see I have a perfect circle to use for something do an acrylic pour on it you could do the triple thick heat embossing, you can do anything really on that. Wow, look at 
that. That is really cool. I mean, I was watching all the shows on the telly, but that is cool when you actually cut it yourself. And then we can poke out all the rest of the pieces. They're perfectly cut. They just because it's a thicker material, you're going to have to poke them because they're not going to fall out as easily if it was a card, the thinner cardstock. Oh, it's really nice, and it gives them. Um, I'll show you in a sec. It gives you that really cool um, beveled edge too, which is lovely. Oh, I cannot wait to try this project. I might have to do it tomorrow now. is absolutely gorgeous. Oh, I like it even more now I've cut it. I didn't think that was possible. That is really, really nice. And look, it's got that gorgeous like beveled edge as well. Lovely. I'm really excited to use this now. It's really sturdy too. You get all that intricate detail and it's like really, really sturdy too. So, put that out. So that is the uh, time piece, let me put it back on its piece of card, put it back the right way, and then the circle, oh, cannot wait to try my idea now, <laughs> okay, uh, so that, yeah, so that's the time piece, oh and the, um, the clock face measures four and a half inches in diameter, or 11 and a half centimetres. So that is, this is too wide for an A6 card, but I think it would still look nice partly on an A6 card actually. This is the kind of uh, size of card I always make. This is my Crafty Potential rectangle. So, you know, it would still fit nicely just on a, a card too. You don't have to cut it out of thicker materials. They're branded as a, a media die because they are a thicker edge die that can cut through thick materials but you don't have to you know there's nothing saying you have to cut something thick you can just um, use them as you would your your regular cutting dies but you will still need to use the metal shim even if you're just cutting a thinner material it, the reason why you're using the metal shim is because of the thickness of the blade on the die or the ridge on the die so you will still need the, um, the metal shim <coughs> so that is the uh, time piece, and you get the little hands as well, if I can show you. So they would go on really nicely, they fit on perfectly. And then we have the, um, they've called them steam cogs and widgets. Um, really nice set of, of cog images. And there's a gorgeous chain as well, which is really good for borders and everything. Um, lovely different uh, styles of cogs actually as well and um, well yeah one thing I was thinking um, so you get these circles that cut out the centre of the cogs if you're going to be cutting out um, like the grey board you're going to get n a nice thick decent um, circle once you've done that and for things like um, spinner cards if you, you, I mean, you usually, they're called penny slider cards, aren't they? You usually stick um, two pennies together with like a circular foam pad or something. But as that's going round in your card channel, the edge of the card kind of wears down um, the foam pad in between the two pennies and it can like wreck the motion and it doesn't spin as nicely. But I'm thinking, um, use a couple of these uh, thick card circles as the pennies and then use some of the smaller circles, stack maybe like two or three in between and stick them and then they would act as what the foam pad would usually be but they're made of card so they're not going to wear down but I'm not sure if that's going to work but that's what I was thinking anyway, I was on a tangent um, yeah, so I've, I've while I was away on holiday um, all of the 17th birthday shows were on the telly so I was jotting down tons of ideas to use everything with so um Hopefully some of them, I will have filmed some of them by the time this video goes up, so I'll add photos at the end. But anyway, that is them. Then you have the three um, frame die sets. So 
you have, let's say the names again, Charlotte's frame is the oval one, then um, Cassandra's Ventana is the rectangular one, and Clementine's glass is the one that I think <laughs> looks like it has a cof uh, coffin, a gravestone um, shape in the centre of it. And I've, I've got an idea to use this as well, so hopefully I'll get around to doing that before Halloween as well. Um, yeah, so they've got um, the cutting edge on the outside, and then the intricate detail, and then um, you can keep them as a solid piece, or you can uh, use any of the inside shapes to cut your centre aperture in them. Um, <clears throat> and on this one, and the top of this one, you actually get two more intricate ones. And you've got a cute little oval in this one and a, a larger oval with the dots. Then you've got a sort of squat rectangle with the dots and then that sort of uh, gravestone shape. Um, so the outer frames of the outer frame of this one is 4 inches by 5.7 inches. So it would fit really nicely on a 5 by 7 card, I think. Um, then this one measures 4 inches by... 5.1 inches so that would probably fit on my favorite kind of size of card it would just fit so if you like making sort of um, a2 cards as well that one just fits perfectly and then this one measures 3.8 inches by 5.1 inches so same kind of height as that one but slightly narrower and then you've got all the different uh, size is let's measure the um, inside pieces for you so the um, oval aperture or frame that it would give you the interior would be it's about eight centimeters by six and a half which is two and a half inches by just over three inches and your little rectangle in this one is two and four two eighths by uh, two and six eighths and or it is uh, just under six centimeters by just under seven centimeters and this one um, is just over six centimeters and the tallest part is eight centimeters or in inches the width is about two and a half inches and the tallest part is about three inches and an eighth. So um, there's just quick measurements for you in case you're interested. Um, yeah, so they're the gorgeous framed eyes. Um, they're great for, you know, like the typical kind of a mixed media canvas. They um, often have some kind of focal element um, and everything sort of comes out from that. So you could... Um, if you're a beginner at the mixed media thing, you can sort of start off your focal element as being one of these three shapes. And you could have cogs ca cascading out of it, or, you know, uh, little embellishments that you've got from all over the place. You know, lots of different things, and I'm sure I will be doing um, a couple of them over on my arty channel too. And then finally, the last set they've brought out is the antique keys and locks. So you've got one key says 21, one key says 18... Then you've got two fancy keys, and you've got three little padlocks. And actually, the end of the two keys that have the numbers on are identical. Uh, this one's a tiny bit different. It's got less wiggles on its... Oh, no, that, they are... Actually, they're the different. No, they're different. Um, yeah, and then this one's got a sort of a, a bigger end to the key as well. And uh, the gorgeous padlocks too. Um, these actually... Yeah, they... Uh, I think I said at the beginning of the video, they brought these ones out with the um, terrarium and hamper die set so like say for the hamper box if you cut off um, the top of the padlock uh, that could be the lock on the front of a like a treasure chest or something for that that might be a video coming up at some point too so anyway um, I hope you enjoyed this uh, close-up look at all of the uh, media dies from tonic and I will plop some photos on the end of anything I've made by the time I edit this video uh, so you can see them in use and there will be lots of videos on my Arty Potential channel and I'll probably even sneak them into my uh, Crafty channel as well, Crafty Potential. So thank you for watching, bye!